The Cross Product, Level 6. In this video, we will focus on the geometric properties of the cross product between two vectors in space. Let's start with the first geometric property. Let vector u and vector v be non zero vectors in space, and let theta be the angle between vector u and vector v. Then, vector u crossed with vector v is orthogonal to both vector u and vector v. This property was illustrated in the first video of this series. Now we want to formally prove this geometric property. In order to show that vector u crossed with vector v is orthogonal to vector u and vector v, we will make use of the dot product. If both vectors are orthogonal to one another, then the dot product should equal zero. So we first denote the vectors in component form as follows. Now we go ahead and find the cross product between vector u and vector v. Doing that, we obtain the following vector. Next, we go ahead and dot this vector with vector u and vector v separately. Then, we go ahead and distribute the components of vector u and vector v for each expression. From here, notice that every single value cancels out, reducing both expressions to zero. Therefore, vector u crossed with vector v is orthogonal to both vector u and vector v. And this ends the proof. Let's move along to the next geometric property. This property was also introduced in the first video of this series. Recall that we use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the vector produced from the cross product of two vectors. This property is used to calculate the length or magnitude of the vector produced when crossing two vectors. So the magnitude of the cross product between vector u and vector v is equal to the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v times sine of theta. Recall that theta is an angle between 0 and pi. We can prove this property by starting with the component definition of the cross product and finding an expression for the magnitude of the cross product. We are going to work with the square of the magnitude. So this expression will simplify to the following expression. Let's go ahead and expand each of the terms as follows. Next, we notice that the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v squared can be represented by using the components of the vectors as follows. Distributing the quantities, we obtain the following expression. In a similar fashion, the dot product between vector u and vector v squared is written as follows. Expanding the expression, we obtain the following. Notice that if we take the expression that represents the product of the magnitude squared and subtract it from the expression representing the dot product squared, we obtain the same expression for the magnitude of the cross product squared. So this long expression can be written as the difference between these two quantities. This expression is referred to as Lagrange's identity, which was introduced in the previous video. Now that we have rewritten the right hand side using these expressions, let's go ahead and use the geometric definition of the dot product and write vector u dotted with vector v as the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v times cosine of theta. Then we use the property of exponents to rewrite this expression. Next, we factor out the product of the magnitude squared. From here, we replace 1 minus cosine of theta squared with sine of theta squared by making use of the Pythagorean identity sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. The last step is to take the square root of both sides. And since theta is an angle between 0 and pi, the square root of sine of theta will always be positive. And this ends the proof. 
the third geometric property is vector u crossed with vector v is equal to the zero vector if and only if vector u and vector v are scalar multiples of each other. In other words, two non-zero vectors u and v are parallel if and only if vector u crossed with vector v is equal to the zero vector. We can prove this by noticing that if vector u is a scalar multiple of vector v, then vector u can be replaced with scalar c times vector v. Then we apply an algebraic property of the cross product, which rewrites the expression to scalar c times the cross product of vector v with itself. Recall that a vector crossed with itself is just equal to the zero vector. So this entire expression simplifies to the zero vector. Alternatively, vector u and vector v are parallel if and only if theta equals zero or pi. Since sine of theta at these angles reduces to zero, and therefore the magnitude of vector u crossed with vector v reduces to the zero vector. And this ends the proof. The final geometric property was also introduced in the first video of this series. The magnitude of vector u crossed with vector v is equal to the area of a parallelogram having vector u and vector v as adjacent sides. To prove this property, we can use a parallelogram with vector u and vector v as adjacent sides we can find an expression for the area of the parallelogram given the magnitude of vector u and vector v, as well as the angle between both vectors. In this case, the base of the parallelogram will be equal to the magnitude of vector u, and the altitude of the parallelogram will be equal to the magnitude of vector v times sine of theta. This expression is nothing more than the magnitude of vector u crossed with vector v. And this ends the proof. Now let's go over a couple of examples that make use of the geometric properties of the cross product. Show that the quadrilateral with vertices a, b, c, and d is a parallelogram and find its area. Determine if the parallelogram is a rectangle. Okay, here we are given the coordinates of four distinct points. We need to show that these points form a parallelogram. We do this by showing that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Let's go ahead and find the vector representation of each side. Vector AB, AD, CD, and CB will have the following values for their components. Notice that vector AB is equal to the negative of vector CD and vector AD is equal to the negative of vector CB. This means that vector AB is parallel to vector CD, and vector AD is parallel to vector CB, since the vectors are a constant multiple of one another. Now that we have shown that the vertices form a parallelogram, we go ahead and find the area by finding the magnitude of the cross product between two adjacent vectors. Let's first find the cross product between vector AB and vector AD. Setting up the determinant and finding the minors, we obtain the following. Simplifying the expression, we obtain the following components for the cross product. Next, we go ahead and find the magnitude of this vector. Doing that, we obtain the following for the area of the parallelogram. Lastly, we can quickly check to see if the parallelogram is a rectangle by computing the dot product between the same vectors. If the dot product is equal to zero, then the vectors are orthogonal and therefore represent the sides of a rectangle. Computing the dot product, we obtain negative two. Since the dot product is not equal to zero, this parallelogram is not a rectangle. All right, let's try the final example. Find the area of a triangle that contains the points P, Q, and R. 
This problem looks very familiar. The points in this problem are exactly the same from an example in the previous video. In this case, we are now asked to find the area of the triangle as opposed to a vector that is orthogonal to the plane. We can find the area by making use of the geometric definition of the cross product. So let's first find the area of a parallelogram by crossing two adjacent vectors. We will then divide that area in half to obtain the area of the triangle. Let's find the component form of vector PQ and vector PR. Then we go ahead and cross these two vectors with one another. Simplifying the expression, we obtain the following components. Next, it is just a matter of finding the magnitude of this vector. Computing the magnitude and simplifying, we obtain the following value. Since this value represents the area of a parallelogram, we need to divide this value in half to obtain the area of a triangle. Doing that, we obtain the final answer equal to 2 times the square root of 6. Alright, in our next video, we will go over our first applications that make use of the cross product.